Hello friends, welcome to my channel Civil Engineering Forum. Today we are going to see construction of a rigid pavement and also going to talk about its joints in detail. Rigid pavements are generally made up of Portland cement concrete and therefore called CC pavements. These pavements have very low flexural strength or flexural rigidity as they act like a slab and transfer the load to its below layers as slabs. This particular pavement as seen is under construction and currently in its curing stage. And as seen over here, these reinforcement bars are known as dowel bars and similarly, we are going to study each and every type of joints and reinforcements in detail. So at first, we will go through the types of joint. Basically, joints are divided into two types that is longitudinal joints and transverse joints. Again, transverse joints are subdivided into three types namely expansion joint, contraction joint and construction joint. Now at first, we will understand all these joints in detail. The joint provided in longitudinal direction as seen here is known as longitudinal joint. When any dimension of this pavement exceeds 4.5 meter, shrink edge cracks generally develop in the pavements supported on the base course during the initial period of curing. And so, in pavements of width more than 4.5 meter, there is a need to provide a longitudinal joint. However, as the lane width of the highway pavement is generally 3.5 to 3.75 meter, Longitudinal joints of CC pavements are provided between each traffic lane. These joints function to prevent the development of additional shrinkage in the longitudinal direction and prevents warping stress. That is due to moisture and wheel load, there may be a slight change in the shape of the pavement. This stress may be relieved and it also may be used as pavement markings. And to prevent the opening of this joint, tie bars are provided as seen here. Now we will see the transverse joints. Transverse joints are provided in direction perpendicular to that of the longitudinal joints. And as we saw, it is subdivided into three types, contraction joints, expansion joints and construction joints. At first, we will go through contraction joints. These joints are provided at maximum of 4 meter intervals, so that the shrinkage cracks develop along the predetermined sections only. That is, we are making a predetermined weakened plane. A considerable part of the load will get transferred across the contraction joint due to the interlocking effect across the fine shrinkage crack, provided these cracks do not get widened in due to the course. In order to prevent the widening of these fine shrinkage cracks, steel reinforcement may be provided across the contraction joints. If these contraction joints are formed without inserting steel reinforcement rods during the construction, the pavement is called plain jointed concrete pavement. Next, we will see expansion joints. Due to temperature variations, there are changes in the length of the pavement in longitudinal direction and to control this, we need to provide expansion joints in transverse direction at the end of every bay of 20 mm gap. To strengthen these joints and for load transfer, we need to provide dowel bars during construction as shown here. And the last is construction joints. During the construction of the rigid pavements, if the concreting work is stopped at the end of the day or suspended due to any other reason, a construction joint is formed. As the construction joints are formed as through joints across the full depth of the slab, it is necessary to provide suitable designed dowel bars for load transfer as seen here. In this figure, the left two are contraction joints in the middle of the bay and on the right hand side at the end of the bay there is expansion joint. Along with this, the dowel bars are provided in this manner for the particular joint. And at last, we will see its methods of construction. The first is alternate bay method. In this method of construction, bays or slabs are constructed in alternate successions leaving the intermediate bays as shown here. These intermediate bays are constructed after a gap of at least one week if ordinary Portland cement is used and two days in case when rapid hardening cement is used. This pavement is practicable and found useful when the proposed width of the pavement is more than 4.5 meter. Then second method is continuous construction method. In this method of construction, all the bays of strip are constructed continuously without any break as shown here. In this method, construction joints are however provided when the day's work is not ended at the specified joint. This method is generally preferred as compared to the alternate bay method because of its main advantage of construction of half of the pavement width at a time. Thus, the essential traffic can be diverted on the other half of the road. So friends, this is all for today. If this video was useful for you, do like and subscribe my channel Civil Engineering Forum. Thank you for watching.